four months of Georgia summer in a cooler does not a pleasant smell make of a rotting turkey carcass. Earl has released a fragrance that far, far surpasses that. Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is Wrench Every Day. And behind me is our Nissan 300Z. That's been kind of the genesis of the Wrench Every Day project cars. It's had several versions and a lot of people working on it, but it is finally working towards a final purpose, what it's gonna actually do. And I said finally a lot because it's, it deserves it. It's, it's what started the channel. Freddie and Andrew started off with, well, actually a different shell, but a, the project in spirit. It was a car that had an Infiniti V8 swapped into it, wasn't running, that came out. Then I came on board and we started to put a 2JZ engine from a Toyota Supra in it that I actually liberated from his Lexus GS300 project that he bought, that he shouldn't have bought. He took the engine back and it's been left with no purpose and just sitting around. So we have decided to build a burnout car. It's something where I went to a Cletus and Cars event helping Derek from Vice Street Garage and kind of fell in love with senseless mechanical destruction of tires. There's just something so fun about being out with fans and being with these cool, crazy cars that explode tires and sometimes engines and turbos and it's just, it's an insane experience and hopefully you guys will be able to come out and see us because the plan is for this to debut at the Cletus and Cars in Bristol. There's not a lot of time from here to there. So the goal for today is to get the car ready for its new engine. If you're not familiar, we are putting in a Chevrolet big block, 454 cubic inches of just American freedom and our Japanese drift slash handling missile. It's a match made here. It's, you shouldn't do it, but we're doing it because we make questionable decisions. But as I'm sure uh, that you've probably figured out, I've got some help. Uh, I'm way behind schedule. We've had projects that just kind of snowballed. And actually this project kind of set me back uh, with a pretty major issue as well. And uh, I needed help. So I called my friend James. We're actually gonna introduce him later in a whole different episode. This this whole timeline is going to be really weird and confusing where you're sometimes going to see James. I've already filmed a nice formal introduction. We don't need to do it twice. But I'll tell you what, if you're looking for help for your business or company, today's sponsor, ZipRecruiter, is just who you need. Now, as you can imagine, trying to grow a YouTube channel takes a tremendous amount of time and effort. And it's something I wouldn't be able to do without important people around me. I've got my wife at home taking care of the house and washing Pira when she can't come to the shop. And we have, of course, editor Dwayne, who takes all of the raw footage and turns it into absolutely fantastic videos for you guys to enjoy. It's like if you own a growing business and need to hire. ZipRecruiter makes hiring so much easier because they do all the work for you. And right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash wrench. ZipRecruiter uses its powerful technology to find and match the right candidates with your job. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply. Additionally, ZipRecruiter has a complete suite of tools that make it easy to filter, review, and rate your candidates. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter have a quality candidate on the first day. No wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one hiring site based on G2 satisfaction ratings as of January 1st, 2022. In fact, the hardest thing you're gonna have to do is remember our special URL, ZipRecruiter.com slash wrench. That's where you get to go to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash W-R-E-N-C-H. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Let me give you a quick walk around of what we are going to be getting rid of. No, we are not getting rid of this uh, Pac-Man Z by KBD body kit. I like it. And it being urethane and so flexible is gonna be absolutely perfect for, you know, spinning around and uh, bumping into walls. Now within this engine bay, not a ton is actually gonna end up getting pulled. We're gonna get rid of the brake booster and master cylinder because we're going to go to a boosterless master cylinder setup. And we are only going to need to tie into our front brakes. The rear brakes will be controlled purely by a hydraulic handbrake. So we're gonna clean some of that up. 
we can get rid of, you know, ABS speed sensors, although that one is glued in. Some people have been upset again still. If you're not familiar with some of the accident damage we reviewed, revealed earlier in Earl's life, this thing is mangled. It is, you know, just, you can see, this is not a good car. The, the, the appropriate fate for Earl probably would be the scrapyard, but we're not gonna do that to him. He's gonna do glorious burnouts. Now, one problem I do have in a 300ZX is a space. I don't have a lot of room in these cars, so we are going to be getting rid of all of the factory interior and mounting a Kirky down low on the floor. Uh, probably gonna pull the dashboard, you know. We don't need that where we're going. So we'll get this thing rolled back, get our tweed all yanked out of it, and then some of the sheet metal fab we're gonna get started on. These little dangle bits down here, we're just gonna cut that flush, cap that off, and uh, get it on the lift and look. We may get rid of these, or I may keep them to serve as our kind of rear bash bar integral mount setup. So let's roll back, get some music going, and uh, let's yank an interior. Let's talk through a couple scales of smells. Um, really high up there, I've told you guys. Don't like burnt gear oil. Some of that may be a little bit of uh, PTSD coming from that Ford Limited Slip Additive that smells terrible when you put it in, but smells even worse when you burn it up and ruin it. That's a pretty big smell. Don't like it too much. <coughs> Earl, come on now. Most people have smelled a dirty diaper. You know what that smells like. So those are, those are some level of smells. You've got cars that have just been closed up, baking in the sun, and have just, you know, that musk about them that uh, burns the nostrils just a little bit. <coughs> then you, <coughs> excuse me. Then you, <coughs> we might have to go outside to finish this discussion of smells and their effects. Then you've got, you know, a full porta potty that's been sitting in direct sunlight for a month and you crack that door open and you break the seal. That's a strong smell. Probably the worst smell I've ever experienced was early on in mine and my wife's marriage. We opened up a equestrian boarding facility and when we initially toured it, we noticed there was a dead turkey in one of the horse stalls and they were supposed to remove the the carcass and we moved in four months later and four months of Georgia summer in a cooler does not a pleasant smell make of a rotting turkey carcass that about put me on the ground it was it was bad like really really bad um, Earl has released a fragrance that far far surpasses that I have never been hit with a smell just so suddenly that he had that musk which wasn't a problem I pulled the seat noticed a little bit of mold and then just suddenly something I don't know if it popped or, or what happened but I I was seeing the little black flickers of you're about to potentially pass out get away from whatever is causing this I, I get back my nose is hurting. I just got back from running and picking up uh, just, you know, some nose flush, nose wash spray to just try to get that cleaned up. Uh, I am going to have to put Earl on a short hold. And again, this is just white, white fuzzy mold. But my plan right now is we're going to push him outside, opened up, 
I'm going to get some bleach and stuff, and I'll order up some protective gear to get this carpet out. Again, we're just zooming in. It does not look like much, but that little fuzz down there, there's some nuts mixed into it. I don't know if it's some weird... I know certain nuts can have things used in chemical warfare. I don't know what's happened in Earl's passenger seat, but it's it's dangerous. Sector clear. Well, let's take you inside. Earl, again? Hi, James. Hey, Jared. Well, uh, we, we've introduced you, but who knows in the timeline or time sphere? One day, maybe you'll know who I am. Otherwise, we're in a multiverse. Who knows what project we're working on next? Um, so, there is no more dashboard. Uh, there's no climate control. The seats and carpet are gone. And again, you'll see that there's a pool of water. James did not get to experience the full strength of everything but you've occasionally noticed some slight cleaner and weird funk smells still there's been a little bit of an odd smell definitely nothing like what i've heard <laughs> told about this car i've dealt with a lot of stink but never almost just knocked straight back so some of the things that will definitely be going that whole abs system but james with a there's a face. <laughs> uh, had the good idea of we're not building the new lines yet, so we're going to keep it there so we don't have brake calipers or a master cylinder go bad. We're going to run a fac the factory tank because it's in a good spot for a burnout car. Um, it's in the center of the car. If I wall tap to the point that that gets compromised... You um, had a bad day. <laughs> it's, something's gone very wrong. Uh, I don't have a lot of leg room, so pretty much all of that has to go. And for anyone who thinks it's a nice dash that we shouldn't have done it to, or uh, done mean things to it, you just touched it and exploded. It was quality, perfect mint condition. It was a shame. It hurt my soul. Look at all that rust, and it's everywhere up there. You know, Earl's not a very good car, is he? Earl is a perfect burnout <laughs> car. <laughs> He's already kind of burnt out, so... As you can tell, we're getting all of this out. We will patch that because we are getting a Power Glide two-speed transmission. Um, there's some holes in the firewall, but there's just, there is a lot of stuff in a car. Definitely a lot in this. One thing that was kind of cool is uh, we found that spare. It's a valuable thing. I don't know that I have the energy to sell it. If you're close and want it and it's before August, let me know. But uh, back here, we may, uh, I'm still on the fence, we may cut the uh, spare tire well out and put a flat plate just because it gives us more room for smoke to come out. These big old danglies will go off and we will build eventually some type of bar. But right now, there's still a lot more to go. We just need to get every piece of interior out of it and then we're going to strip through the engine bay and just get everything ready for when uh, I finally get to build the big block and we will start fitting that in and i'm really excited about that you like big blocks don't you i like big blocks i'm excited about that <laughs> you can't lie can you no no not maybe that could be a fun t-shirt what i like big blocks and i cannot lie yeah so uh wide body 300 zx i like big blocks and i cannot lie
And there's my pile of stuff that I've yanked out in round two. And uh, Earl's looking a little empty. I've got, uh, I actually have leg room, something I normally do not have in a 300ZX, turns out. Remove everything, bolt the seat to the floor, and uh, you too can fit. Well, you fit anyway. I would have fit. I, I would have <laughs> had to have slid the seat forward. So, so James is, well, that pile looks a little bit bigger. So we're just going to come back over here. Um, I was having to do other work. Like, it's trying to uh, get everything done. We are pretty much to the point that that's ready to get cut off. There's a whole lot of cutting to do, but you're about to turn into a uh, pumpkin, right? Right. And that so. looks like a tomorrow problem or a Monday problem. Not James's problem. Not a today problem. <laughs> so uh, we are going to throw all of the trash into the dumpster. Yes, I said trash. A beige, tan, stinky, funky, smelling 300ZX interior is trash. For the four of you who really wanted it, it's in the landfill. By now. It's, it's not good, is it? Where it belongs, the <laughs> landfill. I mean, if it was nice, it'd be kind of cool, but you can see the mold forming on the back of the door panels. It's just not very good. So, uh, James, thank you. Till next time, we'll have him back, hopefully. And uh, we are going to throw a lot of stuff away. And then our next scene is going to be sparks flying. That's the fun. You missed the fun stuff. Oh, man, that's true. cut our names out with a plasma cutter or something. got a small pile of metal on the ground which means we're getting ready to put new metal in i know everyone doesn't like that kind of flat bottom but i think it looks really cool and once we get a little bit of a crash bar potentially built back up it'll look even better sun's bright and I got that welding helmet hair. So we're working on getting our panels put in, our holes filled from getting everything fitted. We didn't make it to this side and there's a couple little more stitches here. Now if you're ever doing a very large panel like this, stitching is the right way to do it or plug welding. I was dumb and just kind of ripped a whole seam and made my life very difficult. So you do little stitches and then you'll come back with seam sealer. So we're getting things formed in. I need to sweep underneath but I like that big, just flat kind of rear, and then we'll put a little bumper bar there for uh, wall taps. So we're making some progress. We will in the morning get some welding gas and go ahead and get all of it finished up on the welding in the back. 
and then we're ready for the next stage, which we'll actually talk about when we've done that other work. So let's go to tomorrow morning. Check that out. I don't know. Some people do not like this look on a 300Z. I love the flat back because that opens up a ton if you wanted to do a diffuser. If you're building a really cool, you know, road race car, you've got the rear bumper supports to do a chassis mounted wing. But uh, look at that. Earl is a flat bottom girl. And they're the ones that make the world go round, right? Flat bottom girls? No, I don't, I don't think that's right, but Earl's a flat bottom girl. So inside here, we uh, got started with our seam sealer after getting everything welded up. Then you just come back with a two part seam sealer if you want. And I ran out over here, but I did not open up another two part because while they can keep once open, it's better to keep them sealed and try to just use the whole unit. And since we do have a few more holes to patch, I didn't want to get it open and just you know, see him four more inches. Now you may be asking, why are we not doing the firewall just yet? Well, that's because I don't know where the engine's gonna land. I may have to cut that entire firewall out and start fresh. So we are at a good point with Earl. We have him stripped front to back. We have whatever mold that nearly knocked me out and sent me to the hospital. That's gone, that smell is cleared up. And we've got the floor ready to let lots of tire smoke and rubber come flying out during burnout contests. So I'm, I'm excited. We are making a lot of progress and uh, getting this guy closer for September 3rd, which is not that far away. And I'm a little bit nervous of it, but I'm also doing some preliminary measuring because I've got to order parts because the next Earl episode is building that 454, that insane junkyard engine. Well, it wasn't insane. It started out as a completely worn out 454 from a uh, dually truck that pulled horse trailers. And it kind of got out of hand. It was supposed to be stock heads. Then it was supposed to be pretty budget heads. And then they turned into very expensive cylinder heads. The bottom end was supposed to be, you know, stock rod, minor things. And now it's a fully forged race bottom end. And my budget engine has turned into a lot but we're going to talk about that when we're actually building the engine but i wanted to give you a teaser of uh the engine sitting in front of earl now obviously it's higher than where it's actually going to sit but <laughs> this is absolutely insane i love the 2j that was in it this is just amazing are you ready now remember too this isn't like the final intake setup there's more that will eventually come but uh but uh oh <laughs> look at this thing so we've got our beautiful fully built aluminum heads we've got that tunnel ram sitting on top of it oh imagine that just like peeking out and you're having to like look around it like that's wonderful i cannot wait to get this built and in, in in there next earl episode i'm not sure if it's the next episode because we have got engines everywhere to build for projects all over the place we're gonna have a lot of long days together but we're gonna get through it all and we are going to get our cars to the events where we're gonna get to hang out and see all of you so oh, man i'm just i don't know there's something about a giant big block in front of a little nissan 300z a nissan 454z right 454 z because it's 454 cubic inches that works right anyway i'm jared reminding you guys to always make questionable choices and when it comes to big blocks i like big blocks and i cannot lie yeah.